So in today's video, we are going to be looking at how to test amphibians for chytrid fungus. This video is going to focus on frogs and toads, but you can use a lot of the same information and apply that directly to things like salamanders as well. So I'm not going to go really in depth on what chytrid fungus is, how it affects animals, and why it's important that you make sure you don't have chytrid fungus in your collection. We can talk about that in a future video. This video is purely on how to test whether or not your animal is infected with this disease. So one myth that I kind of want to bust before we get into this is um, I've been looking at a lot of forums recently and even on Reddit, you'll see people come and uh, they'll come into the forum and they have a frog that has some sort of illness and it's sick. And they'll say, oh my gosh, my frog has these symptoms. And you'll see people in the comments going, man, your frog must have chytrid fungus because it has these outward signs. There are some outward signs of an animal being infected with chytrid. Uh, things that I can think of that are very common that you'll see is animals shedding very frequently because chytrid fungus is a fungus that's attacking the function of the skin on the animal. It is like a skin infection, but it's a fungus. So as they're shedding, they're basically trying to rid their skin of the disease. So you'll see them shedding frequently. You can see sometimes their legs, specifically the back legs, will be red and inflamed, and a couple other signs here and there. However, there's also 50 other things, whether it be diseases, something wrong with your care, something wrong with your setup, that can cause cause those exact same signs. So if anybody comes out there and they say, oh, if your animal's shedding frequently, it must have chytrid fungus, that's not so. The only accurate way to tell whether or not an animal has chytrid fungus is to do a DNA swab test, which is where you take just a standard swab that you would use or that you have done on you, let's say you were sick, and you went to the doctor. This is the exact same thing they'd like swab your throat with. It has a little kind of a fuzzy, I don't wanna say cotton, but it certainly has a bit on the end. And what we're gonna do is actually swab the skin of the frog or toad, or like I said, same thing for salamanders, and this is gonna pick up tiny skin particles and tiny you know, microscopic skin cells will come off on this. You put it back in here, fill out the form, like we're gonna show you guys, ship it off to a lab, and they will actually do their own test on whether or not your animal is infected with chytrid, and then they'll send you back the results, normally over email or phone call. So let's just get right into it. Very simple process. What you wanna do is take the animal that you suspect may be infected with chytrid. In this case, this is actually a wild caught, or no, this is actually, well, some of the animals that came in this shipment were wild caught, some were captive bred. These are Sierran chorus frogs a very interesting and beautiful species. These guys have already been tested for chytrid. I know that these are chytrid free, but we're gonna kinda show you how we do this just for the sake of the video. So you don't wanna be really rough with these guys, but you do wanna restrain them because they're not gonna like this. It's not pleasant. And once you have the animal restrained, you take your swab out of its tube, and we're gonna basically stroke this animal's sides. Chytrid tends to focus and be most common on the lower parts of the frog's body. So, and again, same thing for salamanders. We're specifically going on the side of the frog, the legs, the drink patch, which is this little kind of, not red, but certainly it's a more of a pinkish orange color right here, and then as well on the fingers. These are all places where chytrid is going to be focused and um, more concentrated on the frog. You can swab the back if you want, but I normally don't. So once we have this guy restrained, and they're not gonna like this, it's not pleasant. The industry standard would be to swab each side of the frog's body 15 times. If you wanna do it exactly by the book, you can. I normally don't. I just go through and make sure you're thorough. I'm not applying like a stabbing amount of pressure, but you do wanna go through and make sure that you're putting enough pressure so the tiny skin particles will break off onto the end of the swab. So we take the leg, and again, just really try to be delicate. If it's a smaller frog species, you know, this is a, I mean, this is a relatively small species, but if it's really like a oak toad or something, you know, like a tiny species of frog or toad, you might not be able to uh, just grab the leg and be a bit rough with it like I am here, but as long as you get it good, we're gonna go ahead and do the other side as well. Again, they're not gonna like this, and it's kind of an awkward way to restrain them, but go through, 
stroke the frog's body, make sure maybe you roll it a little bit, get in between the legs on the side of the frog, I'll do this leg as well. Kind of just try to, you know, really make sure you're getting it good. And again, on the fingers of the frog. That's a really good area. You want to make sure you're getting that very good and thorough, or doing a thorough job as possible. Okay, so that's all you really need to do. Like you can see, that guy is certainly stressed out, but fine. I'm a little bit awkward because I've taken lots of the moisture off of his skin, but we're gonna go ahead and let him kind of de-stress and recalibrate himself, and we'll go ahead and put this lid on this tub. So, once you've done that, you have a thorough swab. Again, the standard is 15 times on each side. As long as you do it thorough, and I normally do more than 15 strokes on each side, that's all you need to do. Put your swab back in the tube, and then you're normally gonna fill out a form. I think you can get this done at some like in-house vets and things like that. Um, but bang for the buck, I've always found sending it to a professional that is actually does this frequently is just the best way to go because the price is a lot lower versus you know going into a vet and paying hundreds of dollars for you know just walk through the door, actually interact with a live person and all these different kinds of things. As far as cost goes and accuracy, I really think sending it off to a lab through the mail is normally the best way to go. It really depends where you live as well. Here in the United States, I like to use RAL, the Research Associates Laboratory in Allen, Texas. Here in the U.S., this is the industry standard for testing frogs for chytrid fungus. Uh, all the big name breeders that I can think of, so Josh's frogs, um, certainly, you know, the bio dude, these big names in the amphibian industry, this is who they use, and I trust these guys completely. You can call them up, talk to them on the phone, they'll explain how the test works, uh, the accuracy of the test, all these different things, and this is just, in my opinion, if you're in the United States, bang for the buck, this is who you should go with. If you're out of the United States, over in Europe, or maybe other parts of the world, it could be a little bit more difficult to actually find somebody that can do a test and do it accurately. So in a form like this, which is the just typical form, nothing fancy, you can see owner name, animal name, species, age, sex, date, uh, you want to circle swab, you can either do a check or credit card, like you can see, the DNA tests are $20 each, which really, when you consider all of the specifications, and you know, these are actually like real trained professionals that are doing these tests, $20 is very reasonable, plus, you know, six or $7 for you to actually ship this to the lab. You can see it has the address you'll ship it to right on here. Fill out the information, make sure you check off the chytrid fungus. Now this is critical right here. There are two strains of chytrid fungus. So if you're testing a frog, you wanna do chytrid fungus B. dendrobatus. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. If it was a salamander, you are trying to test for chytrid fungus, you would check the chytrid fungus B. salamandrovorans or something like that. Okay, this is the salamander strain of chytrid fungus. This is the frog and toad strain of chytrid fungus. If you mix those up, that could cause some problems and have some inaccuracy with the test. But generally, if you do fill out the species, they're gonna know it's a frog, so these guys are very smart. They might be able to correct any errors that you do. But that's basically it, guys. Fill out your form, do your swab. We normally use USPS or FedEx. Put it in an envelope. It's normally six or seven dollars to ship. It takes a couple days to get there, and once it arrives, many times, depending on the lab, they can get it done the same day, and if not, it shouldn't take more than a few days for them to process your order and send you back the results, normally via email, on whether or not your animal has chytrid fungus. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to give this video a like. Be sure to leave a comment down below, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching today's video, and I will see you guys in the next video.